Hey guys, what's up? Today we'll be cleaning the carburetor on the CR125. I know for some of you, cleaning a carburetor can seem intimidating, but trust me, use these tips and you'll do just fine. So the biggest reason why carburetors plug up or they need cleaning is because gas sits in there for an extended period of time. The gas will gum up and it'll plug the jets and all the small holes inside the carburetor. To prevent that from happening, Drain your carburetor if you won't be riding for a few months, or use a fuel stabilizer. Alright, let's get started. So this process should be pretty similar for most bikes. The only exception being a four-stroke carburetor might have an accelerator pump or a different throttle assembly. But as far as removing the carburetor, the steps you take should be pretty similar. If you're pulling a throttle body on a fuel-injected bike, you can follow these same steps. First, we're going to remove the seat. It's just two bolts on either side, and then pull the gas tank strap off the tank. I've always found it a lot easier to access the carburetor by removing the subframe. It's only a few extra steps and it helps a lot, especially on four strokes since the carburetors are much bigger. So we're going to do this first by pulling the subframe bolts. Then we're going to loosen up the air boot clamp on the back side of the carburetor. If you have a four stroke, you also need to loosen up your muffler clamp and on a fuel injected four stroke you'll have to remove the wiring from your air temp sensor on the air boot. Next, we're going to wiggle the subframe assembly off the bike. If your clamps are loose enough, this should slide off pretty easily. The next step isn't absolutely necessary, but it makes the job a little bit easier. You can remove the top shock bolt by lifting up on the rear wheel and the bolt will slide out much easier. Now we're going to loosen up the clamp on the front side of the carburetor and remove the fuel line. The vent hoses will also need to be freed up so the carburetor can be removed. The hoses on the rear run between the engine and the rear shock, so pulling the top shock bolt helps get to these hoses a little bit easier. Now we'll need access to the throttle assembly. Wiggle the carburetor loose from the intake boot. On this particular carburetor, there are three screws holding the throttle cap on, but most two-stroke carburetors will have a threaded on cap. If you have a four-stroke with dual throttle cables, all you'll need to do is remove the cables from the throttle pulley underneath the black plastic cap. The same goes for a fuel-injected bike as well. Once you've loosened up the cap, the throttle slide can come out now. If your carburetor has a throttle position sensor like this one, make sure you remove the sensor from the harness, not the carburetor. Now the carburetor can be removed from the bike. Before we open up the carburetor at all, we'll want to clean the exterior. I find that using a little brush to get in the crevices works great, and then follow that up with a blast of air. After you've cleaned your work area, we're ready to split the carburetor apart. First, we're gonna remove the float bowl, so these screws strip pretty easily. You want to use lots of pressure and make sure your screwdriver fits in the screw really tightly. Once your screws are out, slide the bowl off and remove the plastic slosh guard. Next, we're going to remove the floats and the needle valve. On this carburetor, the pin for the floats is held in by a screw, but on most carbs, it just needs to be pulled out from the side. The last thing we're going to remove from the bottom of the carburetor is the jets. The larger jet is the main and the smaller jet with the flathead is the pilot. So the jets are what control how much fuel is delivered to the engine at a certain throttle position. The pilot jet is from idle to eighth turn, and the main jet is three quarter to full throttle. Most frequently, it's the jets that plug up since the holes are pretty small. If the pilot jet's plugged, the bike won't want to idle, and if the main is plugged, you'll notice it doesn't rev out. The next step is removing the choke. If your carburetor has a hot start or an accelerator pump, you'll want to remove those as well. Before threading out the fuel screw, you'll want to check how many turns out it is so we can return it to that setting later on. After pulling out the fuel screw, you'll want to check for any springs, washers, or o-rings. After disassembling the carburetor, we're going to blow out the holes with compressed air. I prefer to use compressed air over brake or carb cleaner since those tend to damage rubber and compressed air seems to work just as well at clearing out the carburetor. Try to blow in every hole you see and keep an eye out for any corrosion or gummed up gas within the carburetor. You want to make sure the jets are 100% cleared out. I do this by holding each jet up to a light source to see if there's anything blocking the hole. Now it's time to start assembling the carburetor. We'll start with a choke first and then move to the fuel screw. Keep in mind, most of these threads are made of brass, so be careful when tightening them. With a fuel screw, 
We're going to thread it all the way in, then back it out to what it was set at before. The field screw is usually set at one to two turns out. On this particular one, I had it set at two turns out. Following that, throw your jets back in and assemble the float and needle valve. The needle valve just hangs on the tab on the floats like I'm showing here. Then we're going to slide the pin through and install it back on the carburetor. Once your floats and valve are installed, check to make sure they're working properly. Now it's time to put the slosh guard on and reinstall the float bowl. Slide the bowl back on and install the screws. Be careful when tightening the screws of course. Before installing the carburetor back on the bike, I'd recommend wiping down the throttle slide and around the intake area. The next step is installing the throttle assembly and tightening down the screws. Once you have the throttle together, check your throttle up on the handlebars and make sure it's working properly. Also, don't forget to plug your wiring back in and install any cables such as a hot start. Now we're going to pop the carburetor back into the intake boot and install the fuel line. Be sure to tighten up the clamp as well. All the carburetor vent hoses should be routed properly before reinstalling the shock bolt or the subframe. With that finished, we can put the upper shock bolt back in and torque the nut. The specified torque for this bike is 32 foot-pounds. Finally, it's time to install the subframe back on the bike. The airbox boot can kind of be difficult to slide back on the carburetor, so a trick I'll use is applying a little bit of water or Windex to the inside of the boot. Lining everything up with the subframe can take a little patience sometimes. First, I'll start with the exhaust, and then I'll move to the airbox boot. The key is to have the clamps really loose and wiggle the subframe into place. You definitely want to get your intake boot all the way on the carburetor or else you'll have a massive air leak. Once you've got the airbox boot all the way on the carburetor, hold it in place and tighten the clamp before you install any subframe bolts. Also, make sure your exhaust has slid into place all the way. We're ready to install the subframe bolts now. These bolts call for 22 foot-pounds. Before installing your seat, don't forget the gas tank strap. The last step of course is putting your seat back on. Make sure the front hook's on as well as the tabs in the center. Then reinstall the bolts on the back. That really wasn't so bad was it? If you run into any issues, feel free to drop a question below. Next week I'll have another video for you. Peace.